it looks cool. Okay, let's pause for a second so I can explain what's about to happen. You're going to see a four-year-old cutting horse work a cow. I started this horse on cattle late, so he's had about as much training as a three-year-old fraternity horse. As he works, I'm going to explain a few things about his form, style, and training. And then I'll break it all down so it makes sense. At the end of this video, I'll have another video pop up which will expand on this training. It's only a couple minutes long, but it's a really important video. Okay, here's my four-year-old gilding. Oh, that looked good. Yeah. Okay, let's stop for a second. So, there's a few things I want you to pay attention to during during this while this horse is working. The first thing, notice how much he spreads his hind legs as he's working. A cutting horse has to have a wide base in order to move his front end clean. So, they have to spread their hind legs to do that. Matter of fact, if you have a horse that won't spread his hind legs, you know, you're really at a disadvantage. I mean, you, you almost don't have a cutting horse if they won't spread their hind legs. So that's just mandatory. The other thing is look how, ho look how bright this horse is when he works. The expression on his face, his ears are pointing forward. Um, you know, the judges really like to see that. They like to see that bright look. They like to see those ears, you know, forked up looking at the cow uh, with a low head. And of course, it, it really helps if the horse is really good looking. And, um, I mean, you can see in this shot here, I mean, this is a good looking horse. Um, so, so happy I, I bought him. Matter of fact, I might tell you at the end of this video, I might tell you the story of how I, I got him. It, it's pretty bizarre. But, um, uh, right there, you can see him and he's, he's kind of down low. You see his tail is dragging on the ground, you know, that's from lowering his, his center of gravity. Uh, I just, I really like that. All right, let's go on. Okay, I quit that cow. Now, let me say something now about working a cow. Um, I only work that cow a few turns and then let him go. And the reason I do that is because I want my cattle to last as long as possible. And if I work that cow until it's exhausted, doesn't want to move anymore, I've just ruined that cow. He's never going to work good again. And, you know, the, the cattle only stay fresh for a certain period of time. That's why we switch, we got to switch them out about every 30 days or they get too sour and won't move away from your horse. They lose their fear of a horse and they won't, they won't move away. They won't react. And if you work sour cattle on your horse that won't move away, you know, there's a possibility you turn that horse into a horse that pins his ears and gets an aggressive look on his face. And, you know, the judges, like I say, they prefer to see a horse with his ears forward, with that nice bright expression. And you work sour cattle on the time, all the time, uh, you know, that could be detrimental to uh, the way that horse turns out. Okay, I'm going to cut fast here. Here we go. Okay, right there, uh, normally we cut slow. We want to we want to control the cut. Uh, and and the judges want to see you cut the cow in the middle of the pen and trap it there. And the thing is, uh, you know, when we cut our first cow or our second cow, that's what we try to do. But when you're running out of time, if you're down to your last 15 seconds and you got to chip a cow from the herd and go catch it um, so that you finish your run looking good and working, uh, sometimes you got to cut fast like this. And I want my horse to feel comfortable doing it. So I'll practice it. You know, I'll practice making nice, slow, controlled cuts, and I'll practice making fast cuts like this. And you notice when the cow took off across the arena and I asked my horse to go catch him, I didn't stop my horse with the cow. I wanted to test him to see if he would stop with the cow right, you know, right in sync. And he did. So I didn't have to even lift my hand. So I was pretty darn happy with that. Now, right there, he was looking over the fence where there's a horse in a pasture uh, on the other side of the arena. And he, was, he took his attention off the cow and wanted to look at that horse. So I brought his attention back to the cow by touching him, touch, 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 
with my herd side foot. That would be my left foot. My horses are trained to stay between my legs. So if I use my left leg, they know they got to move to the right. If I move my right leg, they got to move to the left. So when I used my left leg on this horse, which is my herd side leg, and just, you know, touched him, touch, 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 uh, that, that made him think, okay, we got to go to the right. And that brought his attention right back to the cow. Kind of an important thing. Um, yeah, kind of an important thing. Lowers his head. Nice expression. Checks himself. Okay, so let's stop for a second. So he lowered his head when he worked a cow. And I really like that. It really adds to their eye appeal. Um, and the, the reason why some horses will lower their head when they're working is because after I stop, after, after the cow stops and they stop good, I'll let the horse stand there for quite a while, a minute or two, and let him relax and think. And letting them relax and think kind of makes them you know, kind of lower their head. They feel confident. They can, they can kind of concentrate on what's going on. And so that's why, um, you know, he, he lowered his head right there and he checked himself going around, going across the arena. When that cow's body language changes, I want my horse checking himself ready to stop. And this horse did. And this horse is also trained to stop if I quit riding, which means if I'm not actively asking him to go with the cow, He's supposed to slow down or stop. And um, so when I see that cow getting ready to slow down or stop, I quit riding. Okay. I want you to pay attention also. See this horse's left hind? All right, right there. So he takes the weight off his left hind. And I can feel it, and that worries me. So immediately I start thinking, boy, is this, is his hock bothering him? Is his stifle bothering him? Is his suspensory ligament bothering him? You know, boy, I mean, you got to keep track of that. Because today, we're, we're, we're breeding horses that are literally predisposed to go lame. I mean, seriously. How many times have you seen a, a crippled mare that can't work anymore? And what do they do? They breed her. And they do the same thing with stallions. So we're breeding, a lot of times we're breeding crippled mares to cripple stallions. And we wonder why we end up with offspring that get sore so easily or get lamed up so easily. It's our own fault. We're causing it. We need to start breeding only sound horses. Okay, let's go on here. That was nice. Let me go back for a second here. So that look, you know, that's a lot of eye appeal right there. That's flashy. And, you know, it basically it shows that the horse is studying the cow. You see the horse's ears forward, you know, on the cow. Both eyes are on the cow. He's spreading his front legs, which allows him to go either direction. Um, I sure like the way he's using himself here. Catches himself. We go catch the cow. Now he's fading off too much right there. And I don't like that. I should have held him up with my herd side foot. That looks good. So when he was fading off there, you know, that was, he faded off too much. Let me go back for a second here. Okay, right here, I should have been touching him with my left uh, foot, my, my herd side, my, yeah, my herd side foot to hold him up to the cow, not let him fade off so far. Like I say, my horses are trained to stay between my legs and move off my legs. So, you know, going across the, the pen there, I should have been touching him, touch, touch, touch with my left leg, and that would have held him up to the cow. Now, after that, I mean, he does synchronize really good here. Fires nice and hard. It looks really good. Yeah. Checks himself. Looking over the fence. Okay, so I don't like that. So there's a horse warming up on the far side of the arena. So he takes his attention off the cow, puts it on the horse, 
getting warmed up on the other side of the, of the arena there. So I'm going to touch him with my hurt side foot, which is going to be my right foot, to put his attention back on the cow. There we go. Lowers his head. He's getting ready to work. Cow's looking at him, so he knows the cow's getting ready to do something. See him step back right there? Right, let's, let's go back. That was, a, that was a big thing right there. So when so the cow's turning to go the other direction, the horse lowers his body, lowers the center of gravity, and starts loading up on his hocks. He actually takes a couple steps backwards and, uh, you know, getting everything balanced so he can fire through that turn. And the video that's going to pop up at the end of this video will we'll show you how we get this done, how we train a horse to do this. So it's important that you watch it. Yeah, catches himself, synchronized perfectly. Okay. So that was good. Let's go back. So right here, I pick him up. So I pick him up to stop him. Now, if you pay attention to my, my feet, I quit riding him there. So my horses are trained so that if I'm not actively asking them to go with the cow, I want them to check their speed or stop. And so we're going across the pen here. I quit riding him, and basically I'm just reinforcing, you know, if I quit riding, you check your speed or stop. And so that's why I just stop and let the cow go. And, um, you know, it's just a good thing to do every once in a while. Let's go back here. So overall, you know, I really like this horse. Um, yeah, I really like this horse. Okay, let's stop the video so I can give you some additional information. What you just watched was a short edited clip taken from my online training course titled Cutting Horse Know-How. If you're interested in that, you can get it on my website. It's available as online streaming videos. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below the video. You'll learn a ton of stuff in that course. Everything you need to know about riding, training, tuning, and showing a cutting horse is covered in detail. You'll learn about open horses, you'll learn about non-pro horses, you'll learn how to recognize different cattle, as well as how to manage cattle to keep them working as good as possible. Overall, it's the most complete cutting horse information you'll find anywhere. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you when I upload a new video. Leave your comments and questions in the comment box below the video. Oh, and don't forget to go to my website and get that free membership. It'll give you access to all kinds of good stuff. I mean, you'll learn a bunch. I'll have a link to it down below also. Okay, that's all for now. Take care.